Welcome to the new studio. What do you guys think? I'm slowly but surely becoming a real YouTuber. I've got the professional looking microphone, secondary camera angle. Thank you, Nelly. That is the EOS M50. We've got some sweet lights and we've got the laptop because this video is all about the Premiere Pro editing shortcuts that I use most often. So let's get started right now. Right, so I've got a brand new project here specifically for this video. And what I'm gonna do first is hold down Control or Command and press I to import my footage. Once I've got my footage folder open, I can Control A to select all and open that into the project window. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this by pulling in the entire folder and having like a bin or bringing in your individual footage. You can relabel it. There's so many different things that you can do, but I'm just gonna go through this really quickly so that you can see sort of my process and then I'll highlight some of the shortcuts that I'm using as I do it. So what I'll do first is I'll look for my uh, main camera footage, which in this case is the Panasonic GH5. I'll right click on that first clip and start a new sequence from that clip to set my time timeline with those sequence settings, which is a base frame rate and the resolution. Once I've done that, I can rename this sequence to be uh, the same as the project to just kind of keep things all organized. Then what I'm going to do is import my drone footage. So I'll go from the top drone clip and I'll hold uh, shift and go to the bottom drone clip to select all. And then on that bottom clip, I'll actually drag all those into the timeline. And that creates um, the sequence of those clips as they were shot. So now they're, you know, one to five kind of thing, which it makes life really easy. Now I can already see I've got a small gap here in my timeline. I can select that gap and hold shift delete to ripple delete that space, which is a great shortcut. Now I want to see what my whole timeline looks like. So I just press the forward slash key on my keyboard and that will immediately show me my entire timeline. Now after the drone footage, I want to bring in the rest of my Panasonic clips. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'll go to that second Panasonic clip and select that. Then I'll scroll down to the very last one, holding shift, select all, and then I can drag those right onto my timeline. And this time I won't have the gap. Again, forward slash to be able to see my entire timeline. And there it is, that's what it looks like. Now I've also got a track here that I wanna pull on for some music. So I'll put that onto audio two. Um, and right away, I see that I've got some uh, some empty audio files because the GH5, when it records in variable frame rates, it doesn't record sound. So I want to get rid of these empty audio files just to clean up my timeline. There's a really good shortcut to do that. You could hold Alt and select whatever clip you want, uh, whether it's audio or video, and just delete it. You can also do that while scrolling across a whole bunch. So I'm going to get rid of all of these last audio clips right now, holding Alt selecting them all and just pressing delete, done. The next shortcut that I wanna do is I'm gonna start editing. So I don't want to affect the uh, audio track, my, my actual music. So I'm gonna lock that track so that all these shortcuts that I'm about to do are not gonna affect the music. So right away, I'm gonna start playing this by pressing the space bar. You'll be able to hear that music in the background. Sorry, I should probably mute that, but it's a great track, so deal with it. <laughs> all right, so. I'm going to zoom into my timeline and I do that by using the plus and minus keys at the top of my keyboard. So I'm zooming in and then I'm using the arrow keys to find the spot that I want to uh, begin the video. And it's right when the little girl starts to smile. So it's right about, right about there for ease of this video. So I found my spot that I want to, uh, to start the video. So what you can do is using your Q and W keys, you can actually uh, do a trim ripple delete is what it's called. So if you press Q, it will delete everything uh, prior to your uh, playhead. So watch this, I'll just press Q and boom, there it goes right to the beginning. So then I can play a little section of what I want to, uh, to see. And then when I wanna make the next cut, I press W and it deletes everything past the playhead, bringing in the next clip right towards it. So Q and W, really, really fast ways of cutting your clips to the beat. Now you can see this drone clip is zoomed in. That's because it was shot in 4K, but my sequence settings were set with the GH5 footage, which is 1080. So what I wanna do to match the uh, 4K clip with my sequence is simply right click it and press scale to frame size. So I wanna do that for all of my drone footage. So I can select all of the drone footage at the same time, right click, and uh, scale the frame size. Now I wanna keep doing this really quickly, okay? So we can get through this video and it's not too long. All right, the playback is gonna be a little bit slow because I'm recording my screen at the same time. 
But essentially what I'm gonna do here is just go through this and Q and W my points uh, to be able to kind of like tighten up the timeline to match the music. That Q and W are really, really good shortcuts. All right, and the whole time I'm zooming in and zooming out of my timeline to figure out uh, you know, where my, where my exact cut points are gonna be. So let's say, for example, I want to uh, fade in this video. This is a really good shortcut for keyframing clips. If you hold control or command and you put your uh, cursor over top of the, uh, the opacity uh, level on the clip, you can actually click to create a keyframe. And that's a super easy way and quick way to create keyframes on your footage. Now, another little trick behind this is still holding control or command. You can click again on the same keyframe and it creates a waveform within that level. And that is really, really handy because you can adjust that just like this to be able to get a smooth kind of uh, transition from black to white, which is really handy. Now you can also do that on your audio track. So I've unlocked my audio track, holding command or control and clicking to create keyframes. Again, double clicking on one of them and then you can control that wave, which is really, really useful and super handy. It's a great shortcut. So what I'm gonna do is keep editing through here. And I've come to my first clip that has audio. Now, if I was really getting into a detailed edit, I would keep this audio to uh, to kind of help with sound design and probably cut it up a little bit and affect it to be on more than just one clip, especially the driving clips. But in this case, I don't want to do that. So another way that you can unlink your clips so that you can delete either the video or the audio track is again by holding control or command and pressing L and that will automatically unlink the clips. So now I can just go ahead and select that audio track and delete it. Next shortcut that I want to show you is the razor tool, which is a really, really great tool uh, for cutting your clips. Now you can select that over here and then put it onto your playhead or wherever you like to make a cut, or you can do control C, which is another way to do it. Now I've actually set it up on my keyboard to be just the, uh, the actual key C. So when I press C, I immediately cut the, uh, the clip, which is super handy and really, really good shortcut. Uh, and the way that you can do that is by setting your keyboard shortcuts, which for uh, anybody is edit keyboard shortcuts. Highly suggest you spend some time learning these, but uh, the ones that I'm showing you right now are the ones that I use most often and they're really, really handy. So that razor tool is just C for me, uh, which is really, really quick and easy. Now say you're on the razor tool and you wanna get back to the pointer, which is the little arrow. The pointer is always the letter V. So by if you're on the uh, razor, uh, you can just press V and that immediately brings you back to the pointer, which is also really handy. One more shortcut that I use quite often that you may not know of is a, the key A, and A allows you to move everything on the timeline uh, to either the left or the right of where you're clicking. And this is extremely useful if you've got a really, really big timeline and you wanna move all of your footage and audio and sound design and everything from one specific point, like four or five frames over to either add something or some graphics or whatever, instead of having to select all of it uh, with your cursor and then move it across, you can just press A and click on that one point and that will select everything. So let's get back to this edit. We're almost done and I'll show you the final result. So here is our quick and dirty edit. These are some of the shortcuts that I use most often. And I'm realizing while making this video that I'm still missing a few that I also use very often, like I mean, easy things like um, undo and redo, you know, stuff that you probably already know. But if I'm missing anything, 
Throw them in the comments below. If you do things differently, let me know because I can learn from how you edit, I'm sure, and I hope you've learned something from this video as well. There are lots of different shortcuts for Premiere Pro, and the more that you test them out and you learn and you practice, the faster and more efficient of a video editor you will be, and that is a good thing. So I hope you've liked this video. As always, thank you so much for watching, and uh, I will see you on the next one from here in our new studio, which is very cool, very, very cool. So I hope you've liked it, and I'm gonna cut myself off. I'll see you on the next video.